in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some truth and some things that I wish that I had known before starting medical school. I am now in my final year of graduate entry medicine at the University of Warwick, which is wild to even say because it feels like just yesterday when I started, but it has been almost four years of so much that has happened in my life. And there are a few things that I really wish that I had known or that someone had told me before I started. This would have helped me to have a different perspective and I guess to be more prepared when going through medical school. So without further ado, let's get into the five things that I wish I knew before starting medical school. The very first thing that I would recommend to anybody and that I wish someone had told me is to learn how to learn. For so long in my life, I thought that I knew how to learn. I had a degree before, I studied biomedical science before coming to medical school and I got a first class degree, which, you know, was a huge achievement for me but that meant that I knew how to learn. I was academically able to study and spend long hours reading and going through things. So when I started medical school, I thought, how hard can it be? I've done this before. But honestly, week two, I was struggling. It was so bad because the amount of content and the depth of knowledge that they go into is unlike anything that I had ever done or studied before the jump from not having studied in a long time to suddenly studying and having so much content to learn was huge for me so i really had to find ways to learn so that i could absorb all of that information as quickly and as best as possible so you might be in a similar situation to me when i was applying to medical school or maybe you are about to start medical school and Perhaps you've just finished your A-levels or maybe you did a degree previously and you might be thinking, yeah, this is going to be totally fine. Let me warn you, it is a big jump and there is so much to learn in a very short amount of time. So my biggest advice to you in this case would be learn how to learn. And what do I mean by that? Well, learning happens in many different ways but essentially you need to be actively recalling information so that you are able to see it over and over and over again. And it becomes like embedded in your mind so that when someone asks you a question about the clotting cascade, for example, you know and are able to answer it. And that knowledge is like in there, in your head, you know what you're talking about and what that means. Often what happens is you read something and sometimes you don't understand it first time around, which is, totally normal it just means that you kind of have to go through it again until you do understand it but then sometimes you read it and you understand it but then a week later have completely forgotten it there is this learning curve that happens where yes you might read something or learn something and it will be in your memory for a short amount of time but then very quickly you will forget it which means that you constantly need to be going over the same information again and again until it becomes embedded in your mind so having ways for you to actively recall that information and go over the same topics that you have studied previously is really important. For me, using apps like Anki, particularly in my first year, was really, really helpful because that is an app that is free to use and that will allow you to keep going over concepts and revising things over and over and over again until it becomes embedded in your memory. The second thing I wish that someone had told me and that I wish I knew before starting medical school is that imposter syndrome never really goes away. Getting into medical school was a huge achievement for me. I never really thought that I would make it as a doctor. I didn't ever think that I was really smart enough or that I had the grades. It was a real challenge and a real journey for me to get into medical school. So the day that i arrived i was like i don't know if i really belong here like i feel like i shouldn't be here like surely it was a mistake that i've been offered a place but the more that i spoke to other students who were starting off in year one the more everyone said the same thing it was completely normal for everyone there to feel like i don't know if this is a mistake or not like are you sure that offer was for me and then you'll also meet students who have achieved some incredible things and who've scored amazingly well academically. And that can also make you feel like an imposter and like 
you're not good enough to be there compared to other people. But the fact that you've received an offer says a lot about you because clearly admissions teams have looked at your application and have thought, you know, we want you here. We think that you are good enough to be here. It is so important to remind yourself and to remember that you deserve to be there. Absolutely, you deserve to be there. It is really easy to look at yourself and to see your shortcomings and to see maybe when you haven't done so well, but you made it in for a reason. So try not to doubt yourself. And again, try not to compare yourself to other people. I remember in my first year, very early on, we had a lecture by a consultant obstetrician. I'm not 100% sure, but she was a consultant in her field and she gave us this talk and right at the end she said i often still feel like an imposter and like i don't belong here and like i shouldn't have made it this far and i remember being so shocked because i thought you're a consultant now you've been in medical training for at least 10 years of your life and you still feel the same way and i guess it made me realize that i don't think imposter syndrome ever goes away you can become a consultant you can become the best of the best in your field and maybe you'll still feel that sense of inadequacy and like you are an imposter from time to time so i guess the key message here is even though you do feel like that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true and also reminding yourself that you do belong and that you are good enough and having that self-confidence to overcome those moments of doubt is really really important the third thing I wish that I knew was that you are so much more than just a medical student. It is very common to hear students make medicine their entire personality. And often people will think their entire identity revolves around studying medicine and becoming a doctor. But you and I, we are so much more than just a medical student. Medicine is just one part of our lives. It's not our entire lives, as we often think it's going to be. I had this misconception in my mind when I started that my entire life was just gonna be studying medicine and I was gonna live at the library and I was just gonna be reading all of the books and I was never gonna see my family or my friends, but that is just completely not true. Don't get me wrong, there are moments when you will have to spend the hours and you will have to work really hard and study for your exams, but your entire life does not have to revolve around medicine. There are so many opportunities to do other things and to keep hobbies and to keep other interests. For example, at my university, there are tons of societies that you can get involved in that might have nothing to do with medicine. For example, sign language or sports like football and basketball and netball, or even things like rock climbing or, I don't know, knitting. Like there are just so many things that you can do that you can get involved in. And all of these other hobbies and interests make you you. They make who you are. And it's really, really important not to think that medicine is just gonna be your entire life. You need to have other things in your life that will allow you to reset and recharge so that you can be good when you are practicing medicine. One of the biggest tips that I give to any student that I speak to now who is starting medical school is to make sure that you are scheduling time to do things that you love and to do your hobbies. I was always pretty good at organizing my time and my schedule, but I would never prioritize time to rest and if I could go back and start this all over again, that's something that I would do differently. I'd make sure to schedule in times every day and even every week to rest and to recover and to do other things that were completely unrelated to medicine. Because as I said, those are the things that are going to help you to reset and recharge and that will make you good when you are studying. It might take a little bit of time to figure out but finding that balance is extremely important and it will help you not to burn out. The fourth thing I wish I knew was to learn to make the most out of being a student. As a student, there are so many benefits and advantages that you have that you won't always have. For example, getting student discount and signing up for things like uni days or student beans. 
You can also get money off things like train tickets and rail cards, and you can have deals on things like joining the gym or an Amazon Prime. But aside from all of those things, there are so many other advantages that I guess I'm only starting to realize now that I wish I had made the most out of in my previous years. For example, as a student, you have the time and the ability to get involved in so many things, literally anything that you could possibly want. You could go into hospital and you could ask to speak to a consultant to get involved in some research. Or if you have a special interest in plastic surgery, for example, you could go and ask to spend more time there when you're on placement. I think as students, we think that we are very limited and that we have to stand around and wait for someone to tell us what to do. But actually, we can be much more in control of our own time and our own learning. And understanding that earlier on and acting on it and kind of managing your time in a way that serves you and suits you best is going to be absolutely game changing. For example, if you're on placement and you're scheduled to be on a ward from 8 to 12, but you're there and nothing is really happening, you're not really having a great time, you're just stood around wasting your time, is that really the best use of your time as a student? Could you be doing something else? There are so many things that you could do in that situation. For example, you could take an iPad with you and study while you're there, or you could ask one of the nurses or the doctors in charge to say, hey, look, I'm really interested in practicing my cannulation skills. Can I go and cannulate any patients? Or do you have any other patients that I can practice taking a history from? So identifying moments like that and then choosing to do something about it is key and is definitely an advantage that you have as a student. I would really recommend that you think about what you want to get out of the experience of your time at medical school. Do you want to be published and get involved in research? Do you want experience in a particular field? Or do you want to invest in things outside of medicine that have nothing to do with your life as a medical student? Like all of those things are totally okay. But understanding that you are kind of in control of that and that you can make the most out of those things is key. Your experience throughout medical school really can be what you make it to be. And finally, the last thing that I wish I knew before starting medical school was that you should enjoy the journey. I know this is quite like a cliche thing and that we've all heard it before, but genuinely enjoying every day and every moment and every phase of medical school is something that I wish that I had done before. Now that I am very close to the end, I've only got a few months left and I look back, I can see how far I've come, but I can also see that there are moments when I wished that I was somewhere else or somewhere different, or I wished that I was finishing or that I am where I am now, which meant that I didn't really enjoy or make the most of those moments back then. Time really does fly. And it's so easy to let things go and to not appreciate the moments that you are living in because you're too worried about the next one and what's coming up. It is so easy to focus solely on, I can't wait until I become a doctor, but there is so much enjoyment and fullness and value in learning to enjoy the moment that you're in now instead of wishing it away and hoping that you get to become a doctor one day. Trust me, time flies. The last four years, honestly, I could have blinked and they have just been an instant. And I wish that I had taken more time to appreciate the things that I was doing and the moments that I was living back in years one, two, and three. Don't get me wrong, the journey itself is hard and I have really, really struggled at times. I've struggled financially. I've struggled with things that have happened in my personal life unexpectedly. Studying hasn't always been easy for me. In fact, I've really struggled with studying as well. But learning to enjoy those things in every moment and every stage is really crucial in order to genuinely enjoy your life and to be happy in it and not wish things away. One of my favorite quotes is, the illusion is that the finish line is the destination. 
when in reality the journey is the destination that is something that i try to live by and that i try to remind myself i'm often worried about where i am going to end up and what my life is going to look like and what i'm going to achieve but that's not the finish line the journey itself is the destination and the journey is what makes life and everything that we do worth living so if you are starting medical school or if you're already studying medicine or if you're thinking about applying to medical school one of my biggest tips would be to make sure that you enjoy every single stage every moment because it all makes up the bigger picture and taking time to appreciate how far you've come is so crucial and so important and so much better than just getting hung up on the final outcome so those were five things that i wish that i had known before starting medical school i really hope that you have enjoyed this and that you can relate to maybe one or some of the things that i've mentioned if you have any questions or comments, as always, please leave them below. And also, if you're watching this and you want to apply to medical school, you want to become a medical student and a doctor one day, then you will want to submit your absolute best application possible. In order to do that, I would highly recommend that you check out Future Doc's website, where we can coach you and guide you and help you submit the most competitive application possible to really increase your chances of standing out. We also have a playlist right here, which provides you with a step-by-step -step guide on everything that you need to do in order to apply to medical school. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.